Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's June 30th, 2014, and let's get straight into our news tonight. President Obama has addressed the nation, and I guess the world for that matter, talking about immigration reform, and now we have this article. Obama pledges to redirect immigration enforcement, conceding defeat on the overhaul. The action, which beefs up efforts to stem illegal immigration across the border, could slow efforts to deport undocumented immigrants already in the country. Is one of series of executive actions Obama will pledge since the House decided not to take up immigration legislation this year. So let's hear from the man himself, his thoughts on the issue. I am prepared to work with them even on a bill that I don't consider perfect. And the Senate bill was a good example of the capacity to compromise and get this done. The only thing I can't do is stand by and do nothing while waiting for them to get their act together. And I want to repeat what I said earlier. If House Republicans are really concerned about me taking too many executive actions, the best solution to that is passing bills. So did you hear what he said, that they that he's referring to in that clip is the Republican Party? If they would just do what I want them to do, do what I tell them to do, then I wouldn't sign executive actions. If they would do this, if they would do that, if they would let me launch these unconstitutional wars, I wouldn't have to sign executive actions. Well, that's why you have you know, opposing parties, Mr. President, so you can have checks and balances. So not one branch can have any power over the other branches, so you can have a nice consistent level playing field, not just people to uh, be your yes men like all the other people who are in your White House. But people said no to something, not yes men, but no men. The Supreme Court came out and they said, no, Hobby Lobby does not have to pay for your abortion. Supreme Court rules in favor of Hobby Lobby on contraception. On Monday, the Supreme Court ruled 5-4 in favor of Hobby Lobby in a case challenging the Obamacare contraceptive mandate. So contraception is a piece of this, but the larger issue is that Hobby Lobby just does not want to be involved with abortion. They said, hey, Sally, who works in uh, floral, if you want to go out there and be Miss Wild Girl, you need to handle your own business yourself. We don't want anything to do with that. So good for you, Hobby Lobby, standing on your religious freedoms. And in a country of people who consider themselves to be liberals and free thinkers and were acceptive to other points of view, we have this article. F you, left wingers want to burn down Hobby Lobby after the Supreme Court win. Now I will uh, caution you that some of the things we're about to look at are quite uh, explicit. So let's look at some of these tweets. Sandra McMahon writes, F you, Hobby Lobby, you narrow-minded anti-women pieces of excrement. But not to be outdone, we have R.B. Blair, high court rules in favor of Hobby Lobby. What the F is the Supreme Court smoking? But you know, you have to have the people who always call for the uh, the violent rhetoric. So we have Jeezley Crow, Hobby Lobby, time to burn that excrement down. So all these people who consider themselves to be tolerant of other people's views and lifestyles say, hey, if you have a, a lifestyle or a view that I don't agree with, your establishment needs to be burned to the ground. And then you see the violent rhetoric, just like after Sandy Hook, the unfortunate situation there, you had people calling for the death of NRA members' children. NRA, you don't know what it's like to lose a child, so you need to have your children murdered. So it's always, always these liberals who are actually authoritarians trying to tell you how to run your life. But one thing that I'm not so much against, Ron Paul is saying, hey, come out here and celebrate this country by taking it back, and I'm very much pro in favor of that because myself and Joe Biggs, we were at the border this past weekend and we come across the Border Patrol agent and I'm not mad at the guy, the, the Border Patrol guy we saw at the checkpoint, but it's just the fact that they're bringing the people in from these South American countries or these Central American countries. They contact them at the border and then they say, hey, here's your order to appear in court, but here's your ticket, your bus ticket to anywhere inside the continental United States. So if you're supposed to appear in court in South Texas to be deported and you get a bus ticket to, let's say, Washington State, do you really think these people are going to go all the way back to South Texas to get deported? No. So you have to make these little steps, and I guess it's not so much a little step, just make a line in the sand and do what you have to do to take this country back. Celebrate Independence Day by opposing government tyranny. What should be a celebration of the courage of those who risk so much to oppose tyranny will instead be turned into a celebration of government, not liberty. The mainstream media and opportunistic politicians have turned Independence Day into the opposite of what was intended. 
The idea of opposing by force if necessary a tyrannical government has been turned into a celebration of tyrannical government itself. The evidence is all around us. So that was some Texas straight talk with Ron Paul. And I think at least for me, a good way to celebrate my 4th of July would be to purchase another firearm. But they need some Texas straight talk in New York because they're having all these gun buyback programs and they're getting a measly uh, 30 firearms or so, which I guess may be a good sign. Maybe people are holding on to their firearms. A New York gun buyback scheme turned into a complete flop after it's protested by a Second Amendment activist group and netted just 30 firearms in total, some of which were broken BB guns. The Second Amendment activists were on scene to inform residents that they could instead sell their guns to a licensed FFL dealer in return for fair value cash and that the weapons would remain in circulation. So basically what happens a lot of times these people go to these gun buyback uh, things and they turn in their grandpa's antique firearms or maybe their dad died and they left them a nice assortment of hunting rifles. They go turn them in to the sheriff's department, whoever's hosting the gun buyback, and they get a little $30 Walmart gift card. Meanwhile, the gun may be worth several thousand dollars in some cases. And for all you people out there, I can't speak so much to New York, but in Arizona, if you turn in a gun to a gun buyback program, they resell your gun. So you turn it into the police station or the sheriff or whoever, and you expect them, I guess, to uh, destroy the gun or block it up. I'm not sure what people think happened to these things. But no, they're going to turn around and sell it, at least in Arizona. So be wary of that, that if your guns can be resold anyway, you might as well sell it to the FFL who will give you a decent price for it. Blackwater threatened to kill State Department official in Iraq. An internal State Department memorandum featured by the New York Times Monday reveals how the investigator John C. Richter alerted his superiors following the incident only two weeks before Blackwater mercenaries shot and killed 17 Iraqi civilians. According to Richter, a diplomatic security special agent, Baghdad's Blackwater project manager, da excuse me, Daniel Carroll, threatened to kill him at the end of a month-long investigation. So this just goes to show the things that can happen, the unaccountability when you have these private mercenaries. And that's by no means saying that our current military is blameless. They definitely are not that. But when you get these private uh, contractors to come in there, uh, they can pretty much do whatever they want. And that's even what the guy's saying here is like, hey, he's like, hey, I'll kill you in this desert and nobody's ever going to find out about it or we'll shoot you and just say you got shot by some insurgent. So these are the type of things you have to worry about with these private contractors and these guys are becoming more and more prevalent. And all they do is they change their name and they just keep going on about their business. And speaking about changing names, Saudi and CIA terror army declares caliphate on Ramadan. The Islamist state of Iraq and al-Sham, ISIS, the terror army supported by Saudi Arabia, the CIA and trained by the Pentagon, has declared a caliphate in the Middle East. It has changed its name to the Islamist state or the Islamic State, dispensing with Iraq, Sham, and the Levant. The announcement was made on the first day of Ramadan, the Muslim Holy Day. And basically they go on to say that uh, all Muslims need to pay their allegiance to them, get down with us, and get down or lay down kind of deal. So you have these terror groups running around in the photo that's on Infowars.com shows a map that they released this past weekend saying that we're going to control all of that and yeah, good luck with all that you of CIA funded terror groups. So we'll end tonight with this. Professor body slammed by a cop for refusing to show ID. Let me see your ID or you will be arrested for failing to provide ID. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. That is the law. The ASU officer says Orr repeatedly refused orders and as he attempts to handcuff her, the struggle intensifies. Stop fighting me and put your hand behind me. Stop touching me. Put your hand Stop. Put your hand behind Professor Orr, wearing a dress, is left exposed while on the ground. And this is what the police state looks like. This is not some fictitious thing that's coming down the road 20 years from now. It's very much alive and well in the United States of America today. Because these are not isolated incidents. This happened in Arizona. This has happened in Austin, Texas. It also happened in New York. And these are just the things that we know about. I'm sure it happens more often than this. Uh, people jaywalking, people not obeying the traffic control devices. They get handcuffed, thrown to the ground, and it's just a normal, normal day because this officer felt disrespected. This is what happens in this country. This is what they do with their police resources. And I always have to put the disclaimer out there. There are plenty of good police military, but it's guys like this that just make you look bad. 
So this is what they do with their resources. But here at InfoWars.com, we try to bring you the best with our resources. That's why you need to go to PrisonPlanet.tv, get yourself a 15-day free trial. You get the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, and so much more at PrisonPlanet.tv. So stay tuned because after this break, we'll have a special report. John Bound is detailing the immigration scandal in Falfurious, Texas. And also we have the special report from The Vault, Charlie Sheen's 20 Minutes with the President. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. Alex Jones here to break down some exciting developments in the area of research concerning supplemental iodine. It's nothing less than phenomenal. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. And I used some of the mainline iodine supplements and they upset my stomach and I had some issues with it. Until I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group, who I was already interviewing as an expert on my radio show, and I began taking the product before he actually rolled it out. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals that are incredibly powerful that no one else has as a source for their iodine from between seven and 12,000 feet, literally drilled out of the ground. You put it on a hot plate and it turns into the pure gas. No one else has 99.99% pure iodine. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. I was over 270 pounds. And with the iodine exercise and better diet, I have lost now more than 50 pounds total and I'm continuing to lose the weight. I have more energy, my libido, all this crap came out of my skin. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact, nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, this is trailblazing, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. These cities just above the U.S.-Mexico border don't receive any federal funding. The law-abiding, land-owning residents of towns such as Falfurious, Texas, are overrun by a tsunami of illegals as a result of what's called the funnel effect. The militarization of the border, which includes checkpoints, barriers, and security technology, diverts the human smuggling operations into treacherous, searing, and rugged terrain that delivers many illegal aliens to their deaths. And ranch owners and Texas border volunteer founders Mike and Linda Vickers contending with the outcome. What they are about to tell you may cause alarm because America isn't simply being invaded by countries south of its border. It is increasingly being invaded by countries from all over the world. Can you speak about your organization, and explain where some of your volunteers come from and who they are? They, actually, we even have a, a lot of out-of-staters, uh, Nebraska, Massachusetts, uh, North Carolina, Oklahoma, many from Florida. Uh, part of our mission is to enforce or help assist Border Patrol and other law enforcement entities out here. We uh, will post out on these heavily trafficked areas and uh, report uh, specific numbers to Border Patrol, specific locations, uh, and they have learned that uh, uh, we're a big help. We're like extra eyes and ears out here. Um, we also, a big part of our mission is awareness, and uh, we do many speaking engagements to uh, let people know exactly what's going on out here and what we're seeing, uh, despite what others say in high political offices that the border is safe.